first, okay? So, uh, good evening, guys. Welcome back to the Malaysian Architecture Education Online Series, proudly presented by Masa. Hope you guys are doing well, and thank you for joining us tonight. So, for those who are new, Masa is Malaysia Architecture Student Alliance and is a non-profit student community acting directly under PAM, which is the Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia, consisting of student representatives from all architecture institutes in Malaysia. During this time, Masa and PAM have decided to launch this online lecture series for students to be more productive and gain more insight. Architect Adrianta is the head of PAM Education and Dr. Zak Zairul is the convener. My name is Fan Kai Jing, a MASA representative from UCSI University, and I'll be your MC for today. So, I will first like to introduce our guest speaker for tonight, AR Dr. Ratna Kala. She is an architect passionate about lighting for well being and healthy buildings. She is attached to the Architectural Network and the University of Malaya. AR Rana pursued her PhD in architectural studies with. University Putra, Malaysia, as she was enthusiastic about finding scientific solutions to designing healthier buildings for users' well-being. She graduated in October 2018 with a distinction for her groundbreaking finding on supportive architectural lighting for the tropics. AR Dr. Ratna's multidisciplinary research integrated and the architectural and medical teams and develop an alternative architectural lighting design solution for human well-being in the tropics. It enhanced individuals' morning well-being and productivity 50% more efficiently than the standard lighting in a windowless and workplace setting. She has presented her expertise in architectural lighting for well-being and healthy building design in Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, and publish her discoveries in top-ranked journals from the USA and UK. So, sit back and relax. We'll have Q&A session at the end of the talk. But if you have any questions during the share, feel free to type them down in the chat box so we can attempt to them at the end of the sharing. So, uh, first, now I hope you guys can open your webcam and let's have a good picture first before we start. Hope you guys have your webcam ready. Right, we we'll wait, wait a few more minutes for you guys to open your webcam, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Iris. I call you Iris, yeah. Yeah. Hi everyone. <laughs> how how are you guys? Thank you, thank you for. Coming over on board. Some of you are having semester break. Some of you are having finals. So thank you so much for taking the time. I hope that uh, this talk will inspire you uh, for your future studies or um, future work that if you are interested in lighting. Can everyone come on video mode for a while? Because, uh, yeah, I just want to take a snapshot on, on you guys. Yeah, I think I won't waste much time. I will just do this quickly. Okay, so uh, without further ado, I will quickly go to my presentation is a uh, yeah i'm not blocking anyone right uh, my screen it doesn't have a box at the uh, presentation everything okay yes everything okay all right so yeah everyone good evening uh let's be i hope you all have taken your dinner or you are having your dinner enjoy your dinner uh let me First, uh, actually thank uh, architect Adrianta Aziz, the chairman of PAM Education Committee and the entire team of MASA uh, for giving me this opportunity to present my area of expertise. And thank you for the students who are taking time off their schedule to uh, who, those who, whomever who are interested in 
listening to this presentation of mine. So, my expertise lies in healthy indoor lighting design and I'm sure everyone is wondering what it is and why it matters. So in today's presentation, it'll be quite brief. Uh, I will, it's just version 101. I wouldn't want to uh, put too many information for you guys and choke you off. Uh, it's just five parts that very quickly I will go through you to give you a general overview of what healthy uh, indoor lighting design is all about. So what is light? Um, any one of y'all want to Q&A together? If not, I will just carry on. So basically, light is an electromagnetic radiation. Uh, we learned that in physics 101. It has, uh, it's a wave with wavelength, frequency, and speed. It has seven different colors at its own wavelength. And visible light is the only uh, electromagnetic spectrum between the range of 380 to 780 nanometer, sandwiched between infrared and ultraviolet uh, spectrum that is visible to our eyes. Other wavelengths are not visible to human eye. So we can only perceive light that is in between 380 to 780 nanometer. So what's the purpose of light? Very quickly, we all know it supports our vision. With light, we can see details and we can differentiate colors. Without light, you can't perceive anything in detail. You can't out, um, understand color, you can't understand details. And I will quote Louis Kahn here where you, it reminds me of Louis Kahn because in darkness, you just need uh, uh, just the right amount of light to say that you are in a, uh, a space that is dark. Without light, you cannot appreciate darkness. So Louis Kahn is my favorite architect and he reminds me of appreciating light. We all know that in indoor lighting, we, we use it every day. It supports our performance. Uh, it supports us to do our tasks with appropriate speed, accuracy, and comfort. Imagine you're in an operation theater, you don't have light, and that's how you end up with all the scissors being uh, inserted in the, or the process being inserted when they stitch you up. So light is very important to make you do things efficiently. Besides that, light, uh, indoor lighting also makes you to um, appreciate the design space uh, and use it functionally and uh, aesthetically. Other than that, um, second purpose of light, it influences mood and emotions. We know bright light is more alerting. So I don't know how many of you having bright light right now at night, but in my place here, it's quite bright for me to be alert. So yes, it is create, influencing my emotion. And if you are under some yellowish color, reddish color light, dim ambience creates a more relaxing and cozy environment. So... We can see that different lighting ambience create different experiences. Some like the rhythmic lighting, some during escape, there is this like neon glow that directs you to an escape. Um, if you go to museum, they use um, light that actually would not uh, uh, hurt the, the exhibits. It will actually protect the exhibits. So besides creating uh, um, Emotions, it, uh, it's all, besides different experiences, it's also arousing different emotions. So, have, enjoy this, this, this video that I'm going to share with you. So we all know that in darkness, we feel insecure and unsafe. We feel fearful, but the power of light, it makes us feel safe and secure. And there's this movie called The Lights On or Lights Off. It's a very famous horror movie. So you can enjoy light when you know there is, you are fearful of darkness. So that is how light actually influences our mood and emotions. The next third 
purpose of light is it regulates our circadian rhythm and this what this particular purpose of light not many are aware of and to those who are attending today uh, this will be your role now to uh, enlighten others on how light is actually regulating your circadian rhythm so our 24 hour solar light dark, dark cycle our sunrise and moonlight they naturally have to synchronize our biological functions um the natural um can you all see my arrow yeah the natural bright light uh, from sunlight during the day makes us to be awake alert and active for work and during the night we have the net, uh, natural dim moonlight and starlight that um, promotes rest and makes us to fall asleep so our clock is first taking all these light signals and regulating our biological function. So how is light actually regulating our circadian rhythm? What is happening? Um, in our skin, we have receptors that is actually capturing the amount of light. Besides that, we have an extension of the brain that we every day use it. It's our eye and the retina has um, three photoreceptors that does this job silently and efficiently um, given appropriate light signals. So each photoreceptor, be it the cone, the rod, or the intrinsic photo, the a very long name, but its short form is IPRGC, they are all sensitive at specific wavelengths of light. So we know visible light to our eye is between 380 to 780, but all these photoreceptors are very sensitive to specific light. So what happens when light actually enters our eye, all these photoreceptors are capturing that specific wavelengths in the retina and is sending the signals to our brain to trigger visual effects to our visual pathway in um, uh, colored in, let me see, yeah. You can see it's this red color root and it will trigger biological effects to the non-visual pathway. So this one goes through the SEN, the pituitary and the pineal gland. So they are doing their job silently in a different route. And all these are happening simultaneously. Very efficient photoreceptors. So we have to thank God for our eye that is an extension of our brains to help us regulate our circadian rhythm. So now uh, we will move on to the third uh, part, which is uh, what is healthy indoor lighting design and why it matters. Okay, I'm usually used to having a two-way dialogue, but I understand Zoom, everyone is just listening. So I will just give you the answers. Okay, healthy indoor lighting design is a lighting that supports our psychophysiological well-being. It actually therapeutically supports the various well-being indicators from the three roots simultaneously. And what I am talking, you all have no idea. Okay, come, let's explore together. According to the voice, uh, Lighting affects us, uh, our psychophysiological well-being through three separate yet interrelated routes. Mm -hmm. Our system route, that is through our visual pathway, mood route and circadian system route through our non-visual pathway. Each route has its respective uh, indicators and of about 20 indicators that are very sensitive to light, eight that are commonly studied are acuity and contrast, uh, Visual comfort for visual system root, positive effect, negative effect for mood root, cognitive performance, alertness, and melatonin rhythm for circadian system root. So the big question is, do we have exposure to supportive lighting every day? The problem is we are not aware of the problem. And what's the problem? The problem is we humans have moved into an indoor generation. This is a story about us, the indoor generation. A 
generation that spends 90% of its life indoors. It all started the day we left nature behind. We filled our homes with lovely things and all the stuff we wanted. Our homes became places you would never want to leave. Artificial light placed daylight. And we put in little artificial suns everywhere to make the darkness bearable. So things started happening wrong and then we started experiencing light-induced garden disruption because we are an indoor generation. We urbanites lack sufficient variation in light levels and spectral composition needed for well-being. And what am I talking? Let's go on. During the day, during the day, we have bright daylight outdoors, our natural sunlight. But we work and live indoors in an extended dim illuminance, which is mainly less than 500 lux and with limited blue wavelength light. Our sunlight is a blue light, blue rich light. And towards the night, we have the dim moonlight and starlight outdoors. But indoors, we live and work with too much of light, like today. We are listening to this talk with a lot of lights, uh, but outside is quite dark. So we are indirectly experiencing what the World Health Organization has highlighted back in 2002 that we indoor generation, the urbanites are experiencing light-induced circadian disruption. You and I, we are all experiencing this. And what is it? It's a circadian desynchronization from an entering condition due to inappropriate architectural lighting exposures throughout our 24-hour day. So we see this every day. We live in it, we work in it, our offices, our workplaces. It seems to be reasonably well lit, but that's for visual needs. What about our biological needs? These lighting conditions are considered relatively dim. And towards the night, we are over exposing ourselves to light and what happens if when our circadian rhythm gets desynchronized or disrupted uh, professor figuerio from lighting research center from usa explains signals your body needs, you'll most likely fall asleep and wake up around 15 minutes later every day. Pretty soon, your body's clock will be out of sync with your daily schedule. Also, getting the signals at the wrong times will shift the time of your natural clock even further. If you've experienced jet lag, you know what this feels like. You have trouble sleeping at the right time, you felt tired during the day. If your biological clock is out of sync with your watch, it's like having jet lag all the time. So yes, we, we experience jet lag all the time in our lives. Uh, okay, for those who are new to all these terms, these are like scientific jargons. Let me explain to you, okay? Uh, don't be afraid. Our circadian rhythm is our daily 24-hour cycle of uh, psychophysiological indicators. If you see um, in an entering condition, uh, the red light, which is our melatonin hormone, it's low during the day and it's high at night at 12 o'clock to 6 a.m. Um, alertness and performance, uh, which is the blue color line, it's rising up during the day and then it, it dips down at night. Um, okay, if y'all are wondering what is melatonin, melatonin is a sleep hormone. It makes you sleep. So, so in, a, in an entering uh, condition, you sleep at night, you are awake in the day. But when you are experiencing light-induced circadian disruption because of being an indoor generation, your your rhythm becomes crazy, like what I've um, 
uh, diagrammatically drawn. Uh, and this is caused by one of the factors, unhealthy light dark exposures every day. And this is what is causing us to have jet lag. We feel tired, we feel uh, moody and, um, in normal days. And we try to get our sugar boost, our coffee boost to keep us alert, like 10, 11 o'clock every day. We, we feel like, I mean, you have got eight hours of sleep or seven hours of sleep. The next day you are supposed to be functioning well, but you just feel tired and you go out for a puff or for, uh, for smoking or you just go out for drinking coffee for the caffeine. These are all things to boost you up so you can work. Um, one of the reasons that cause this um, fatigue is it could be due to inappropriate lighting throughout your 24 hours. So when it prolongs, like when you skip one night of sleep, your melatonin hormone get, takes like, if I'm not mistaken, three to five days to get back into its entering rhythm. If you have proper lighting, if you do not have proper lighting, then it goes haywire and your system becomes uh, disrupted. And this can be possibilities of aggravating cancer and then negatively impacting your well-being and your organizational productivity. So that's what healthy lighting can, can do to avoid uh, circadian disruption. Um, before we go further, there are a bit of fundamentals we need to know about lighting design. So I'll just share with you. First, for visual effects, we, we all know that we, we have like the brightness. It's like very bright. We talk about illuminance. We talk about color, like the pinkish color light, warm, warm white light. It's a CCT. So very quickly, uh, um, a photometric measure that we commonly use in the building industry uh, is the horizontal illuminance where we measure the illuminance level at task plane at desk level. We, we use the word lux uh, as a unit and we use a lux meter to measure it. So if you see what the engineer's design is for an office, uh, a deep plan office, if we see Malaysian standards 1525, they just have to provide 300 to 400 lux and they design so. If it's the IES USA standards, they will design it at 750 lux. Our JKR standards is at um, 500 to 300 lux. So this is what engineers will do. They are just designing based on visual requirements. They are not wrong, they are correct, but these are outdated. We are now moving forward and we need to embrace the new challenges and adapt to the new challenges, incorporate the new challenges for our future. And that's what healthy lighting is about. The next uh, measurement for visual effects is calorimetric measures where we, are no, we, we normally know the correlated color temperature. It uh, classifies the different types of white light. The unit is Kelvin and we use a spectrometer to measure the CCT level. And tropical CCT ranges from 4,000 to 40,000 Kelvin. So that means we live in a cool white and daylight kind of color. The, the neutral white and the bluish white color environment in the tropics. They are the higher CCT ranging from 4,000 to up to 18,000 with artificial lighting. Some got higher uh, colors. Uh, they create high illuminance uh, business light setting. As for warm white, uh, it's within the lower ranges of CCT between 2,700 to 3,600. All depends on the manufacturer's uh, specification. It resembles sunset and it creates a cozy, relaxing setting. So this is basically what we use every day. If your home, any lamps go fused, you will just change it to a cool white or a warm white or a daylight lamp. So you, I'm sure you are all subconsciously doing this interior designing by yourself. So those are just two measurements or factors that influence visual effects. But for non-visual effects, we have many other factors. And this is just the basic that I'm going to discuss. There are more, but we shall not go in too much detail for session 101. So for very basic 101, we have illuminance. 
For non-visual effects, we need at least 1,000 to 5,000 lux during the day. But are we getting that indoors? A study from China, uh, they have um, explained that uh, 980 to 1,100 lux improved daytime alertness, performance, and was within visual comfort. Some of you, when you hear um, higher lux, you will question that would be so glary, uh, too bright. But studies have shown that it's within visual comfort limits. And in fact, the MS standards have these ranges for very detailed works, like in labs and in operation theaters. So what bright light does for non-visual effects is it lowers the melatonin level in the morning so that at night it bounces up to be at high level and improves our sleep. If we don't have bright light during the daytime, melatonin is still high and it's telling it's still night mode and that's why you are feeling very tired, um, like what um, Mariano Figueroa said, you feel jet lag, you just feel not you, you are not alert during the day despite having sufficient sleep. Naturally, melatonin should drop during the day, but depending on your environmental lighting conditions. So in my study, um, we tested 750 lux from 500 lux and uh, with 1000 lux. And the feedback from that study was, we are just working in an environment that is very bright, comfortable, and it, it's like working under natural daylight setting. It's not like you are indoors, but you are feeling like you are working outdoors. So I will just play this video. Don't blink your eyes. Just see it, stare at it, you will know it. So it's not too bad actually. It's not glary. Uh, the participants didn't complain of it being glad if you design it well. All right, so at night, how much lux can actually affect our melatonin. If you if you have a phone, a uh, smartphone, you can download Lux Meter or any app. Um, I have one in my phone, and if I measure the lighting levels that I am right now, it's about. Um, I just raised this up. It's about 150 lux. Uh, of course, when I turn it vertically, it changes, but it's about 150 lux, and a lighting at 40 lux is already suppressing melatonin. That means at this condition that I'm presenting to you right now, my melatonin is supposed to go up to make me feel uh, sleepy at night. It's now being suppressed. That means I am in an active alert mode. My melatonin, my sleep hormone is low. So that means it delays my sleep-wake timing and it makes my alertness or work performance the next day to drop. So that's how lighting is subconsciously affecting us that we are not aware of. So if I compare it with our natural environment, um, in the temperate climates, around noon time, we have about 1,000 lux outdoors, but indoors we just have about 100 lux. In tropical climate, um, a few studies have done, but if I compare it to the Malaysian standards, uh, we have sky illuminance ranging from 30,000 to 120,000 um, at the ground level. And if we see our Malaysian standards, we design between 150 to 500 lux. And we are actually having less than 1% of light indoors. So whom do we blame? We have for donkey years lived in a dim environment of an indoor generation. So what are the factors that influence us well-being? It's wavelength. I've mentioned to you earlier, our photoreceptors, they are very sensitive to specific wavelength light. So if we don't have light that has that wavelength, um, the biological activation or the visual activation will not be triggered. The next is CCT, uh, color temperature. So we, for non-visual effects, there are two factors. Uh, time of the day effect for each individual. We, we need cool white and daylight during daytime to stimulate alertness and concentration. 
but we need warm white kind of setting, the yellowish color setting for night to promote healthy sleep pattern. Between individuals like you and me, we have social cultural uh, preferences, uh, I'm sorry, social cultural differences in our preferences and comfort. Like the Europeans and North Americans, they tend to like um, 3,005 to 4,000 Kelvin kind of ambience. It's um, lower compared to Asians. We Asians like brighter, higher CCPs, that is from 5,000 to 6,005. We can't blame anybody because we live in an environment like tropical. We have our CCP starts at 4,000 to uh, 40,000. So we just love brighter colors. For spectral power distribution, every lamp that we use have different graphs. So we need to know which graph, uh, which lamp gives us quality of light that is uh, closely related to the sunlight. So if you see sunlight, uh, it has peak in the blue spectrum. And if you see LED lights at 4,000 and 6,005 Kelvin, they have similar approaches of the sunlight. So that's why we all our smart devices use LED, which are bright, and it actually uh, has this um, bright light kind of setting, which is good during the day, but at night, I'm sure you have heard about the blue light hazards. If you use fluorescent, it has peak in the green and yellow wavelength range, and that's just good enough to support your visual, um, your rods and cones for your visual uh, effects not for your circadian effect. So deciding on the type of lamps is also an important character. Next is considering the timing of lighting design. Uh, for visual responses, we can definitely live with a static lighting condition throughout the day. But for non-visual re responses, we require different lighting conditions from morning till night. As for duration, we take split seconds to trigger visual sight but for our non-visual responses it's a bit slower during the daytime we need about one to two hours and during nighttime we need about approximately 15 minutes to one hour so that means your light now will have a, an hour effect later what you are receiving now you will only realize it one hour or two hours later if it's in the day or if it's at night it's just for the next 15 minutes you are the, the processing of light in your brain takes 15 minutes. For spatial distribution, it's how light enters the eye. So if you see, uh, studies have actually captured how light is perceived. If we use our devices, we are reading from below. Uh, light is coming in, uh, into our eyes and affecting our upper part of the retina. But if you see skylight, it's light above that is being received by the lower part of the retina. So which one is more sensitive? Researchers have found out lighting from above that hits our lower part of the retina, like skylight, is more supportive of regulating the circadian rhythm and uh, towards melatonin suppression. So the angle of your light is also very important. So what's the big hype about the future? It's moving towards circadian lighting. And it's the trend of healthy indoor lighting for the future. And let's hear it from the well standards. This is version 2.0 of sustainable green buildings. I think it's now time for wellness to come to the fore because as an industry, we are well versed on sustainability in its broader incarnation. This is the next level. The spaces that we live and work in every day have a significant impact on us as human beings. If we don't consider the human health and wellness of people that will occupy the spaces we create, we're not getting it right. Human cost is one of the highest costs up to 90% of operating business. So retaining and attracting the best people is really important. And I think when employees see that this is something that's a priority for the company, I think they recognize as a company that they want to work for. We want to keep your people productive and passionate. Make sure the workspace is a healthy, vibrant environment. In the same way with the green building, we went once we knew how to make buildings better for the planet. We had to do it. It was a moral imperative. Now 
we know how to make buildings better for people. We have to do it. So I'm seeing circadian lighting as being one of the, the, the trends that's really moving rapidly. The, the light is such an important part to our health. It, it manages so many elements of our system, our sleeping patterns. It is critical to so many different biological functions that our body goes through. So these are the future trends. And if we see one example of uh, uh, circadian lighting is a human rhythmic protocol developed by research researchers from the Netherlands. Uh, and they developed this for boosting effect during winter and it was most effective in workplace with less daylight. What it does is it, the lighting has timely exposure and it changes illuminance and color temperature for activation and relaxation of the well-being indicators throughout the workday. So what it does is when you go to work, you enter a bright kind of environment between 8 to 10 because during winter, everybody comes to office in darkness. So we give them that morning boost and then towards uh, it gradually drops down towards noon to give them a relaxing uh, atmosphere for us to um, consume our lunch and digest that needs a lot of relaxation. And then towards um, two, we have to be in full force to be in alert mode to, to deliver our work. So they have a sharp uh, rise in lighting levels and color to 6,000 Kelvin for that uh, boost for post lunch dip effect. And then towards the evening, it gradually drops and another boost for to minimize evening fatigue. So with this kind of intervention, they have found out that it enhanced the individual's alertness and impacted their well-being and productivity positively during winter. But this configuration is still a research in progress. What about the tropics? We do not have local studies and we have nil local dynamic lighting configurations. And throughout my study, when I spoke to many people, they were like, what lighting that changes that you are talking? So we follow Thomas Edison, the inventor of the incandescent lamp. There is a way to do it better. Just go and find it. So to do uh, the full length of this study cost millions. We didn't have enough budget. So to move on with whatever limited resources we have, we focused at the morning hour where we need to be in our energetic form uh, to deliver our work efficiently. So we looked at the timing between 9 to 11 for the morning boost. And of all the many factors that I've discussed with you, we have studied it um, carefully, seeing the patterns, seeing the hours, looking at the illuminance level, looking at the spectral distribution to see that this lighting is designed healthily. And we did a lot of uh, simulation, uh, on-site measurement, and we used softwares like Dilux and CS estimation, all computed and measured to deliver the right amount of light as designed. And we achieve that if we do it right from the very beginning. So these are the, the extent that we have to go to the extra effort we need to put in to ensure that we design appropriate healthy lighting design. So in here you can see we have symmetrical kind of design on the left and right. So everybody in the lab gets similar lighting conditions. And the results from my study is like if we implement a 500 lux JKR standard constant lighting, it only supported five out of the eight indicators in the morning. But if we use dynamic lighting in the increasing lighting pattern, it supported all eight indicators, which is better for the morning boost. And when we compare it to the control lighting, a follow-up control lighting like next day, it only supports one of, the, one of eight uh, indicators. But for uh, dynamic lighting, with an increasing lighting pattern that is from 500 to 750 lux and 500 to 1000 lux, it supported five of the eight indicators. But the decreasing lighting pattern, it negatively supported the eight, uh, six out of eight indicators. So uh, the decreasing pattern was a no-no, but an increasing pattern was optimal. So we, my study concluded that dynamic lighting 
therapeutically supports well-being and it supported most of the indicators from the three routes. It improved visual comfort, it improved positive effect, cognitive performance and wellness, and it suppressed melatonin to lower levels compared to uh, our JKR 500 Lux standard. So with that, we presented our first, uh, first intervention of developing tropical dynamic lighting. And this was groundbreaking because we needed higher intensities we needed an increasing pattern as opposed to a decreasing pattern from the overseas market. And we, we made it simple. We, it was very efficient to just use 6,500 daylight CCT with LED lamps. They used fluorescent lamps. So with this, we minimized lighting variation. We made it uh, energy efficient with LEDs. So this was groundbreaking and we need more researchers to come up and complete this uh, study so that we can develop our tropical circadian lighting. As for now, in the market, we are all um, having products that are based on seasonal climate data, which we have to tweak a bit uh, and adjust a bit to accommodate to our tropical needs and our biological needs in the tropics. So my journey from my research life from 2016 where I had to be involved, I got training to do medical lab uh, research and then I created awareness to people telling that 1000 lux is not glary, it's, it's um, very comfortable if you design it well with, um, with hip high clearance and it's, it's very nice to work under 1000 lux and I've given lectures to university students, to consultants and to a wider range of professionals. So with that, I would like to end my presentation by um, giving all glory to God. And with healthier lighting, we can create healthier building and we can become healthier people. Thank you. And I hope the students, um, those who are in, uh, listening to this talk today, will be inspired to, to take up this uh, research and complete it and develop our own lighting for the future. So that's all. Thank you, everyone. And I think I finished it in time with 45 minutes. I'm open to Q&A. All right. Thank you so much, Arana, for the very interesting and rich sharing. I think like this is very new to everyone. And everyone, I think, is like still uh, processing the information. Like There's so many new scientific words and so on. I really hope you guys enjoyed the lecture. So, uh, yeah. so do I the stop first... sharing? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, so I can okay. just see the chat, yeah, to answer. Yeah, so mm, the first question is from uh, A.R. Uh He asks, is handphone apps that can measure looks as accurate as compared to looks meter? If uh, not, what is the accuracy level? All right, uh, definitely it's not accurate as a lux meter, but you get to gauge uh, an estimation. Uh, my old Nokia Lumia had a better estimate than um, the present phone that I'm having, but it gives you a sense of uh, direction to know how much of light you are experiencing. So um, like uh, for Android phones, I think if you have, this app called the light meter if i just show this to you guys it tells you um the lighting level and also what kind of color of light you are receiving so um now you are seeing light emitted from the led screen it's blue bluish color and it's about uh, 20 lux uh, or something yeah 22 lux so if you can just install this and play around with the app it's not accurate but you get to gauge roughly. If you go to uh, daylight and if you get a reading about 120,000, then you know your phone is about the right uh, measurement. If not, you do your max and you do your plus and minus. So any other questions? A spectrometer is uh, a good device, but it's also an expensive device. So uh, for laboratory research, if you can afford it, it's good an investment where it captures the exact uh, 
uh, wavelength, uh, the spectral, I mean, how the graph is of that light. Any other questions? Any other questions, everyone? Okay. All right. So just said something based on the study on interior lighting. What is the main difference between office interior and housing interior? Okay. Um, basically, we are just humans. I think well standards say we just need to support human well-being. It's, I would ask you the question, uh, at what time of the day do you spend your time in the office and in the house? If you are working from home, like during this MCO, CMCO period, we are all working at home, uh, our house becomes the office. And therefore, we need uh, bright light during the day. But if you are coming home to relax at night, then you need a dim kind of environment, a yellowish kind of environment in the evening so that it uh, gives you that setting, that ambience for your body to realize, okay, you need to have rest and you need to relax and sleep. So it really depends on where you are at what timing. And we as architects, future architects, we need to make sure that we design the building to give the users the opportunity to adjust their lighting according to the time of the day. So if we, if we are just following our fathers and doing the mistakes, we will just give our fluorescent lamps, overhead ceiling lamps, and leave it to the user to do their ID intervention. But if we are a careful architect, a designer, a lighting designer and an engineer, we will ensure we give them alternative approach of them to use different lighting. You can have fluorescent lamps, you can have LED lamps, you can have incandescent lamps. All these have to be incorporated because they have different um, characteristics that support our health at different time of the day. So Yisam, I hope I answered your question. Yeah, any other question? If there's so, uh, they are right now. Uh, can everyone come on video mode if you don't mind sharing yourself? So uh, they are right now. So uh, currently in this MCO, I think most of us are like uh, working from home. So how do you suggest if we can like DIY the lighting so that is more good for our well-being? Okay. Um, the simplest way is if you have natural daylight access to a window, just open it up. Uh, your eyes can detect from uh, 10 lux, 5 lux to uh, 150 or 300,000 lux. Your eye has that ability. It's just that we have been uh, for donkey years being in an indoor generation that we cannot, we feel if it's very bright, it's glaring and discomforting to our eyes. But there are ways to improve it. Um, open up the windows. You can screen the lower part of the window. Have more light on the upper part of the window reflecting to the ceiling. So the reflected light will drop into your interiors indirectly. And you can brighten up that face. The problem is if you have... <coughs> Tins, you use uh, tins and uh, like green tins, blue tins, bronze tins that filters off the blue wavelength of natural light. So I do not know what tins or screens you are using to um, supplement the blue light. You need artificial light. And LED in the uh, cool white and daylight uh, spectrum imitates to a certain extent, sunlight's uh, blue peak. So if you use LED, uh, 4,000 lux or 6,500 lux during the day, it will help to actually make you feel more alert. And if towards the noon, maybe you can turn on your fluorescent lamps 
so that it will be more relaxing towards your body. And towards the night, you can have either fluorescent lamps or incandescent lamps or LED in the warm light, uh, warm white category to supplement your lighting. So these are different lamps. Of course, that will require different kind of fittings for you to adjust the light. Also, we can we, we normally have this um, tendency of looking downwards to our our devices. We look downwards, so there is a lot of blue light emitted from your devices to your eyes. Um, from the partial distribution, we know light going from below to your upper part of the retina doesn't affect your melatonin suppression as much as light, light from above. But that blue light is the bright blue light. So that would definitely interrupt your melatonin rhythm and indirectly affect your sleep rate behavior and alertness. So there are like uh, seven um, factors that you have to have check and balance to make sure that your lighting is right at that appropriate time of the day. So it's not an easy DIY. You would need to have a specialist telling you how to design that lighting. Yeah, but you can have natural daylight that is an easy way to DIY. If you want to change your fluorescent to LED, you can use the LED starters, the EM starters to replace the fluorescent starters. Yeah, but you, right. need, you need to have an electrical knowledge background so you don't blow up your house with different kind of light fitting. So be caution, cautious, yeah, don't go ex explore your house because of trying to experiment on different lighting on the whatever fittings you have. Any other things or if it's, uh, yeah, oh, sorry. There is a question, yeah. Uh, if I read out the first one, due to lighting will affect to people body temperature such as bright light will make people feel hot. So how can we solve this problem? Mm. Okay, uh, let me let me just have a drink a bit. My throat is getting dry. Okay, um, light is an energy. Um, the electromagnetic spectrum radiation is an energy wavelength. So if we have more lights, uh, we are thinking that we are going to feel hot. Um, yes, if you go, go outside sunlight, it's naturally warm. But you are just getting 1% with a thousand lux indoors and that is not that hot. You don't sweat. You are not that comfortable. Uh, it doesn't create that kind of ambience if it's designed well. If you create 1000 lux, you put all the lights in your table and you are working close to all this energy being emitted, of course you will be sweating. Uh, so it's how you design appropriate lighting to achieve uh, the brightness you want. Also, if you go into technical terms, you can use uh, a lamp that emits more lumen. The lumen efficacy is high. So these are the things that we, we look through um, if you get a specialist to design. So I hope uh, user, I, I have answered the question. Uh, you have to know where to install your lighting. You need to have the head uh, clearance um, the head high clearance to make you not feel hot in a brightly lit room. And if the next question is, what is the best type of lighting to make room adequately conducive for studying or working conditions? Uh, like I've explained to Iris, if you are, if your room is a study room and you are using it during the day, uh, LED retrofit in the 6,500 temperature could be uh, something that will create alertness. Definitely, it would be a bright light and it will make you feel alert. But if you are 
studying and working at night in that same light setting is going to really disrupt your circadian rhythm because it will affect your melatonin rhythm and it will affect your sleep wake behavior and you will be experiencing jet lag. So if it's normal days, I would recommend you to have normal warm light. You can have your incandescent light or fluorescent lighting in the warm ranges, uh, 2700 Kelvin uh, fixed as um, wall fixtures. So it creates that um, cozy ambience like the photo that I shared, I will just share again. You just hold on. Give me a minute, yeah. And where do I go to share screen? Okay, so if you see this example, this gentleman has designed uh, the house using warm ambience because it's at night, he just wants to relax and just do a bit of reading. So this is how you can actually design your spaces. Yeah, but if you, if let's say you have submission tomorrow and you really need to be alert, of course the, the bright light is the heaven to to make you feel alert, but the consequences is you will be zombie the next day, and that's because you are experiencing uh, light disrupted circadian uh, disruption. So that is natural. It takes about three to five days where for melatonin to get back to its normal rhythm if you have correct lighting for one night uh, skipping your sleep. And if you don't have Proper lighting, so that cycle, that vicious cycle continues. And that's how you get unhealthy very quickly. Like you see now, there are increasing risk of cancers. If somebody is having some cancer, some diabetes condition, increase in obesity, these are potentially linked to one of the factors. If not food, it's about your environmental lighting. Because your hormonal rhythm are being disrupted. So anything else? If not, I would not want to keep you all guys under bright light with all the LED devices flashing light into your eyes. I would support healthy lighting. I would recommend you to install the, uh, the apps that is in your Windows system or Mac system that goes warmer. Yeah, those are certain... Um, Measures, you can do it on your own, but sometimes it's a bit, uh, like at my age, it's a bit discomforting. Uh, maybe at a younger age, it's okay. So, yeah, uh, the next question Calvin asks is, if I use stable lamp during study, will it influence productivity? Yeah, okay, um, light, as long as it emits light, it will affect your productivity. When there's light, you are alert. When there's no light, you become sleepy. It's just that you need to know at what angle to have that light on your work so that you do not, you minimize your circadian rhythm disruption. You can't have that light uh, having too much of reflection towards your eyes. You need to put it at an angle that it makes that ambience bright and you can work. So if, if that's the thing, everybody, good night. Have correct lighting and uh, hope everyone is healthy with uh, healthier lighting. Thank you. I think, I think there's one more question from oh. Kelvin. Young. Yeah, sorry. What is the question? Did I miss anything? Uh, sorry, I don't see the question. Anybody can read? The question is... If I use table lamp during study, will it influence the productivity? Yeah, I think I answered. Yeah, just now answered already. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so any other okay. that y'all... Yeah, if you want to explore on lighting, yes, come on board. I will encourage students to come on board and explore healthy light, healthier lighting with us, a group. 
if you are into ID interior design, uh, please have an, a, a, a consultant, proper consultation with professionals before you do any retrofit. All right, so with that, thank you everyone. Good night, all the best for your finals. And yeah, I would just take a, okay. a shot of those who are still available here. And I have done that. So thank you everyone for your time. Good night. So everyone open your webcam so we can have one last group picture. Feedbacks that you want to share with me also can, no problem. Hi, Isam, you are here. Yes, from UM. Sorry, if I don't see your faces, I might not know your names very well, unless it's the glamorous names. Okay, so yeah, anything else you want? I just want to take a say cheese and I just take a print screen of you guys. Yeah, cheese. Okay, yeah, that is wonderful. So thank you for adding. Uh, I think now, I think you are in the cl getting close to the thousand group of people that I have spoken to. So the knowledge is being uh, shared and you all should share it with others. All right, all the best. Thank all right, you thank you, Dr. Irana. So thank you everyone for joining us for the tonight's online lecture. We hope you guys enjoyed it and get a lot of insight from Dr. Ayer right now. Maybe you can also follow her footsteps. So do keep in touch with us on our Masa Instagram and Facebook for the next online lecture. Until then, have a nice night and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.